remove the union nut from outdoor unit for piping process usage and cover the opening of the valves. Remember, pipes must always be dry, clean and tight. Piping process. It is recommended to use a copper pipe with thickness of at least 0.8 mm due to higher pressure of the R410A refrigerant. Use a pipe cutter to cut the pipe marking point. After the copper pipe is cut, use a reamer to remove any burr on the cutting edge of the copper pipe. Remember to slant down the pipe during reaming process to prevent any burr from dropping back into the inner pipe. Improper rimming will cause a bad flare and finally may lead to gas leak. Next, insert the union nut as shown here onto the pipe. Now, let's go on to the flaring process. Identify the correct core size for the particular copper pipe at the bar of the flaring tool. Clamp the copper tube onto it and ensure its correct clearance sitting on top of the bar. Flaring top gauge is recommended in setting this clearance. After clearance is set, move the yoke right on top of the copper tube and lock it to the bar by turning the clamp handle clockwise to tighten it up. Next, turn the flare handle clockwise until a click sound is heard. Then, turn the flare handle counterclockwise to its original vertical position and release the yoke from the bar by turning the clamp handle counterclockwise. Release the copper pipe from the flaring tool and inspect the flare conditions. The union nut should sit perfectly on the flare and irremovable from the copper pipe. The flare should have an evenly shining surface, perfectly round shape and without any cracks. Since the flare part comes into contact with the connections, carefully check the flare finishing. Installation of outdoor unit. Let's now move on to the outdoor unit installation. Start by determining the location where the outdoor unit is to be installed. Outdoor unit must be installed at a well-ventilated environment. Make sure there's sufficient space around the air outlet and that the base of the unit is able to support the unit's weight. Piping connection. Now, connect the piping to the indoor and outdoor units. Align the center of the piping and sufficiently tighten the flare nut with your fingers. Use a torque wrench to further tighten the flare nut. Using spanner to tighten the flare nut is strictly prohibited, else over-tightened conditions might occur and lead to gas leakage. Now, connect the piping to the outdoor unit. Utilization of torque wrench is a 
bus to tighten the flare nut until the click sound is heard. Using a spanner is strictly prohibited to avoid over tightening. Electrical wiring connection. For outer unit electrical wiring, unscrew the two screws located at the terminal area and remove the metal plate. Loosen the clamper screw at one side and unscrew the other side screw. For easier wiring process, turn the clamper 90 degrees down. Now, connect the wires to the three terminals shown. The earth wire has to be connected at all costs to avoid any electrical shock due to leakage current. Please note that all the wires should be connected to its respective terminal as per indoor unit. Ensure the wires connectivity point and clamp the wires with the clamper. Complete the wiring procedures by putting back the metal plate to the terminal area and fix with screws. Evacuation process. First, Unscrew the valve stamp cap from the service port of the three-way valve gas side located at the bottom of the outdoor unit and connect the manifold gauge low side charging hose blue color to the three-way valve. Please note that the end of this charging hose connected to service port should have a check pin. Then connect the manifold gauge's center yellow color charging hose that is the hose ending with the check pin to the vacuum pump, vacuum pump adapter, as indicated here. Turn on the vacuum pump and fully open the low handle of the manifold gauge. Pressure is observed to drop below 0 PSI. Continue evacuating for approximately 10 minutes. Assure the low pressure gauge is at minus 0.1 megapascal, minus 76 centimeter mercury. When the evacuation is finished, close the low handle of the manifold gauge completely and turn off the vacuum pump. Leave the unit in that condition for five minutes to make sure the manifold gauge needle doesn't return to zero. Take note that if the needle returns to zero, there is a leak. Disconnect the charging hose from the vacuum pump and the service port of the three-way valve. Screw the valve stamp cap to the service port by using the torque wrench. Unscrew the two-way valve and three-way valve stamp cap. Open the two-way valve by turning the valve stamp.